My name is Felix and I am here to introduce you to today's episode of Total Space. And as always, there's been a lot going on with Starlink lately, so let's dive right in. It's time to take another look at the Starlink constellation, what it is and what it has accomplished since the beginning. And of course, deeper look into the different orbits and tech used on the satellites. Starlink is a low Earth orbit internet satellite constellation, mainly to serve people with bad internet access in the rural areas. We'll take a look at how it has performed lately against other providers and how viable the system is or will it go bankrupt. It all started back in 2015, when Elon Musk announced that there is a significant unmet demand for low-cost broadband globally, and the SpaceX treatment facility for satellite development and production was announced. At the beginning of 2016, SpaceX announced the plans to fly the prototype satellites in 2016, and to have the initial satellite constellation operational around 2020. Keep this in mind while we go through the episode. This seems to be another example of Elon time being close to the real time. The initial satellites had actually been developed the same year, but the launch was delayed due to trying to find low-cost solutions for a user terminal. Finally, early 2018, SpaceX announced the version 2 prototype satellites called Tintin A and Tintin B. At this time, SpaceX had received regulatory approval for around 12,000 satellites already. In April 2019, SpaceX seemed to be in a hurry, needing to launch 2,200 satellites within five years. But now we know they found a solution. To this date, most of those have already been launched. And then we saw the first launch of a test batch in May 23rd, 2019. 60 satellites stuffed into a fairing. We were all wondering how they would separate. SpaceX had come up with a possible solution. Just stack them and rotate the second stage to give them momentum to separate like a deck of cards. And wow, it just worked. Amazing view. Heavy separation systems removed once again, Elon's motto, best part is no part, happened. After the test batch was successfully launched, the tests began. Three out of 60 satellites failed and couple were internationally deorbited, thus giving SpaceX important information where they need to improve. They of course had several different designs to test out and today, most of the test satellites have been decommissioned and burned in the atmosphere. After about six months was the time for the first operational Starlink launch. SpaceX had worked out the bugs from the test pads and had a more clear vision of what they needed to happen. In early 2020, SpaceX became the biggest satellite operator of all time. And after that, it has been a rapid fire of Starlink launches. Zero. Ignition. In the first half of 2021, SpaceX had launched a rocket every nine days until they finished the first layer of the constellation on May 26, 2021. Almost 1800 satellites to date. Per Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX had been in about a three-month-long hiatus due to working on the laser terminals or space lasers for the next batch of satellites. The rocket shortage ended on September 14th when SpaceX launched their first batch of Polar Starlink satellites from Vandenberg Space for Space. They have even sailed the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship to the west coast to support the polar launches. Some polar launches will likely be also performed from the east coast, but launching from there SpaceX takes a performance hit. 
and will likely have to launch fewer satellites. We could already see this on the latest mission as it had only 51 satellites. Laser terminals will be included in all Starlink batches from now on to support the network. SpaceX will be able to serve customers in the middle of an ocean as the signal can now travel from a satellite to another without a ground station. In 2020, SpaceX had been testing the Starlink network with a private beta. And later in the year, they opened up the better than nothing beta for certain areas. The beta started generating a lot of interest over the weeks and months. At first, Starlink definitely had outages due to lower amount of satellites, but by now the beta is on a level comparable to other service providers without major outages. On September 17, 2021, Elon Musk tweeted that Starlink will come out of the beta in October. Starlink offers fast internet speeds up to around 300 megabytes and a latency as low as 15 milliseconds. It also crosses its competition per speedtest.net article, but fixed broadband where available is still better on average. Starlink also has unlimited data, but data caps or speeds might get introduced later in different tiers. Monthly cost of Starlink subscription is 99 US dollars. On top of this, there is the equipment, which we will talk later. My favorite fact about the satellites is that their whole effect thrusters run on Krypton gas. This is one of the places where SpaceX was able to save a lot. Usually electric propulsion uses xenon gas, which is more efficient, but also a lot more expensive. Basically krypton is the side product of xenon production, so it is cheap. Using krypton will mean that Starlink satellites have limited age due to the gas being corrosive, but that was the original plan anyway. They have a planned life of 5 years before being replaced. Starlink satellites can also autonomously do collision avoidance, and they are the first in the world to do that. The satellites are also almost fully demisable, meaning letting them burn in the atmosphere is safe and no debris will rain on the ground. Due to concerns of the night sky, the current satellites have sunshades, so sunlight won't reflect off of them, so in their operational altitude they are not visible to the naked eye anymore. Let's take a look where Starlink is especially needed and why. First goal is of course rural areas, where people have bad internet connections, if at all. Good examples of this would be a Native American tribe, who SpaceX took with them to the internet age. Felt very compelled to come out and see what they could do to help. And it seemed like out of nowhere SpaceX just came up and just catapulted us into the 21st century. Remote work, learning, etc. was not possible due to slow, rare and expensive satellite internet connections. Another case in otherwise well-connected area would be a natural disaster where people lose internet and it's needed by the emergency units. There are already few examples of this. A town in Washington burned and SpaceX were there to help fast, much faster than you could build a fiber network. Also in Germany, there was flooding in the mountain areas and Starlink was used to help with the operation. One of the more interesting news recently has been that Starlink has successfully been used as a positioning system. Funny thing is that SpaceX didn't even take part in this, as the engineers were just using the radio signals from the satellites to create the positioning system, without permission, but still legally. They don't need to crack the signal, as the encrypted signal is just as good for positioning. So they actually came up with a system that has 8 meter accuracy, which is over 10 times slower than GPS, but eventually, when more satellites are launched, the accuracy would improve a lot. And as the satellites are plenty, and on lower orbits, this positioning system would be near impossible to jam. So maybe one day we will see Starlink augmenting the other positioning systems. 
Starlink has also been tested on a military aircraft a few times and eventually the tests will end up in an operational use of Starlink in both military and civilian airplanes. Another one is ships. A big cruise ship could pay a lot for a service as well as an aircraft carrier. Ships and airplanes will be a big and lucrative market for SpaceX. And with the second Starlink layer about to start launching, SpaceX will start to have internet on the polar regions as well. This will be especially good for people living at the Antarctic and people sailing there. There is no real internet connections on Antarctic except slow satellite internet and faster internet on the habitat areas. Last but not least, there's the option of using Starlink in space. And Elon Musk did tweet about this. SpaceX are planning to equip the Crew Dragon capsules with free Wi-Fi and a food heater. There are some luxuries the recently launched Inspiration4 mission lacked, even though they were pretty content with their flight. Anyway, per Elon Musk, they would use KA band parabolics or laser links for Dragon and Starship, and maybe even the International Space Station. SpaceX has launched 1737 Starlink satellites into orbit to this date. Quite a few of these have been deorbited, and some have failed and naturally decayed, or are still decaying. First layer of 1440 satellites are in 550 km high orbit. Many of the future satellites will be around this height or lower. SpaceX at first had satellites approved at up to 1200 km orbits, but those were changed to lower altitudes due to space debris concerns. In lower orbits, failed satellites will deorbit in months or even weeks rather than years or decades. Internal SpaceX launch costs for one mission is around 28 million. This may be lower with fairing reuse. And it has been said by Elon Musk that the satellites are cheaper than one launch. So the cost would be under $500,000 per satellite. Which already would be a good satellite price. But there has been even some rumors that the satellites could be as low as higher class cars, so even under hundred thousand dollars is possible. And that is quite a bit cheaper than any other satellite provider. SpaceX has developed the most sophisticated phased array antenna. These antennas have only been used in military use. Hence the initial terminal price is high. Currently it costs around $500 for the subscriber, but internal price started around $1500. So SpaceX is taking a hit on every cell, but within few years we could easily see $250 user terminal due to higher production. SpaceX CFO Brett Johnson revealed the manufacturing numbers during Satellite 2021 conference in Maryland. SpaceX are producing about 5,000 user terminals weekly, but they are trying to boost the production to meet the demand. And the demand is pretty high at around 600,000 pre-orders. Their next generation user terminals could have multiple times the production numbers. How about the direct competitors? OneWeb is another high-speed satellite internet constellation with fewer satellites and in higher orbit. They are direct competition and have launched satellites already, but to my knowledge, they have not started any kind of test programs. So their constellation is quite far from ready. Also OneWeb went bankrupt to be saved by the UK government. Another one is Amazon Kuiper. They have launch contracts with ULA on Atlas V, but they have not launched anything and they have not disclosed much. So at this point, not a competitor, but Amazon has money. So they are potential second provider for high-speed satellite internet in the future. 
and basic geostationary satellite internet is not really a competitor as it's slower and has almost a second of latency and will start to fade away when people start changing to Starlink and other similar providers. There has also been other constellation suggestions like Facebook's one, but again, they are not close to launching. Elon Musk has said that they are trying not to go bankrupt. I mean, it's real important to just set the stage here for LEO communications constellations. Guess how many uh, LEO constellations uh, didn't go bankrupt? Mm -hmm. Zero. Right. Zero. They have invested a lot in the system already, but with almost 100,000 customers already, with another half a million waiting, the customer base is there, and if SpaceX needs more money, investors are lining up, of course. If nothing surprising happens, I don't really see anything bad in Starlink's path. And with the Starlink, SpaceX can also fund Starship development and flights to Mars eventually, sometime in the future. So, do you think Starlink will succeed or not? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Remember to tune into the next one. More up. Used on the satellites. In the ruler. Back in two that there is significant and for low earth significant it all started back in 2015 when Elon Musk announced that there is significant time SpaceX has re to separate like the hook to give a modem $1,500 space, but the internal price started at $1,500.